and welcome leaders. We're so grateful to be able to serve uh, church leaders in Kansas City and helping you understand what's happening in our society and then specifically within the context of uh, the KC market. Uh, so a few quick things. First of all, um, this is fresh data. As Mark said, we've been doing national research that will help us compare against uh, Kansas City norms. Uh, and then we we want these, um, we've got actually like a really cool things we're going to be doing here. We'll have, have a series of PowerPoint that we'll go through. We've also got this sort of in the form of a large like like poster. And so you can actually go by downloading their toolkit, you can actually get the PowerPoints and get these posters, a uh, little city guide that I think could be really helpful for you as leaders as you're, as you're working through uh, this in staff meetings or with, uh, with elders or across, across your ministry. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I want to just sort of say um, is that uh, for me as a researcher, you know, one of the great privileges is to be able to listen to people's spiritual story. You heard Glenn talk a little bit about uh, you know, being able to listen and, and you know, in, in scripture, we see this idea of ears to hear and eyes to see. And we hope this might be part of your experience in this forum and in forums to come. <clears throat> um, my colleague, uh, Savannah, and I will be presenting about eight key ideas that we found in this research. Uh, and, and what we're really focusing on is the reputation of the church. Uh, what do people think of and want from the church? So four of the findings are on people's perceptions of the church and pastors and four of the findings are on what they're expecting of churches. So let's dive in. Okay, so the first thing we looked at was the overall reputation of churches in Kansas City, local Christian churches. And we actually used three different uh, survey questions. This is an aggregate of those three to help kind of bucket people into various perceptions. And you can see about half of uh, Kansas City residents that are, are uh, positive towards churches. It doesn't mean it's all green lights with them, but, but overall they have positive perceptions. Uh, about a third are indifferent to the church and 23% are uh, negative to the church, all, all very similar to national norms. <clears throat> I often think that indifference is um, actually sometimes more challenging than negative perceptions because uh, people build an impregnable wall of indifference. It's very hard for them to pay attention. And again, I actually think even those, some of those who are positive towards the church may have these sort of light, sort of warm, fuzzy feelings, but they're not quite sure what to do with their perceptions of the church. Um, let me show you a good example of some of this. Um, <clears throat> we can actually look at, at the data and really cut it down by de demographics, men versus women, generation. You can see that, that negative perceptions are actually more common among millennial Kansas City residents. You can see uh, on the data here that 31% of Kansas City millennials are negative, 31% are neutral and only 38% are positive. So you can see a definite generational pattern. We're gonna come back to that idea in a couple of minutes. You'll also notice that the, the, the three columns on the far right, uh, perceptions based on practicing Christians, non-practicing Christians and non-Christians, as you'd expect huge differences, non-Christians in Kansas City, more than half have negative perceptions, 31% are indifferent. And of course, this is this is where, you know, sort of double clicking and understanding who we're talking to and, and who we're thinking about uh, is very important. But overall, uh, the church has a strong and mostly positive reputation within Kansas City. Yeah, great insights, David. Moving on uh, to our next thing that we want to talk about today in the same vein of what people think of churches and pastors. Let's talk about the church's quote unquote brand in Kansas City, right? When people look at the church, what do they see? And we see that in Kansas City, for the most part, um, the, the trends mirror what we see at the national level. And with that being said, the top item that performs um, really well in Kansas City, we see that 78% of people in Kansas City see the church as a thing that offers hope to people. Um, which I think is definitely something for us to celebrate. Maybe that's surprising to you that people see the church really as a beacon of hope in many respects. Um, and then I want to draw our attention to the negative items, which are on the, the right-hand side there of your screen above that, that red bar that says negative views. The top three most frequently, um, most frequently thought negative thoughts are that the church is uh, known for the things that they are against, that they're judgmental, and that, they're, that the church is irrelevant to me. But we do notice there, when we compare those yellow bars to the red bars, that in Kansas City, having the opinion that the church is irrelevant to me or hypocritical or even um, that the church is detached 
that people in Kansas City are less likely to think those things than national norms, which is good news. So there, there's less of a negative view overall of the church in Kansas City, um, which again, may be surprising to you, but definitely something for us to keep in mind as we want to hear from people and, and steward, steward their voice and steward their voice well. So David's gonna spend a little bit more time diving into those negative views um, so you can you can go ahead and do that now, David. Thanks, Savannah. So the the next slide uh, really dis displays um, the the perceptions of younger generations. I've spent a lot of my career trying to understand and focus on perceptions of younger generations. Did a book years ago called Unchristian, uh, really focusing on the negative perceptions of young young people toward Christianity. And I think this slide tells us that in Kansas City, we still have many of those same challenges among younger people. This data here shows millennials who are Christians and non-Christians and Gen X and boomers across faith groups as well. Uh, but you'll notice along the left-hand side, um, you know, irrelevant to me, hypocritical, known for the things they're against, detached from the real issues that my community is facing, judgmental. In every case, millennials and in some cases, Gen Xers uh, have more negative views of local churches. So how is it that the church can sort of you know, uh, 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 help to, you know, uh, focus in on the most important things that, that young people are concerned about. We'll talk a little bit more about that in, in a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> same kind of ideas related to perceptions of local pastors. If you don't mind going back to the last slide uh, for a minute, if, if, if you see here, Christian pastors are out of touch with the needs of my community. I do not know any Christian pastors personally. Christian pastors are only focused on growing their churches and not on community transformation. Stories of clergy abuse have negatively impacted my views of churches. In every case, again, you see millennials and Gen, Gen, uh, Gen X lower on those, uh, more negative towards the church. Um, we're seeing a lot of evidence in our research that young people don't just want to see the church is true, that Christianity is true. They also want to understand that Christianity is good. And I think that's an important way we need to think about uh, representing an apologetic for the sake of Christianity. And this data shows that there's a lot of skepticism among young people today. Yeah, for sure. I think it's even interesting, David, to note those Gen X numbers, that they are almost just as high as those millennial numbers, too. That's pretty right. interesting. And I would say even unique to Kansas City. It is. Um, really great. So now moving on, and we're going to talk about the other side of the coin, the positive perceptions of local pastors, because the news, um, yes, there are bad news elements in this data presentation today, right? Things that we need to be aware of, weaknesses that the community is perceiving, so on and so forth, right? But there also is some great news that we can celebrate here today. Um, so these are positive perceptions of local pastors that we recently tested. And on the left side, you'll see that Kansas City really hangs with national norms that it's it's pretty much on on par there um, but i do want to draw our attention to the right side of the screen right where we compare church adults in kansas city to unchurched adults in kansas city and we see a gap there in the opinions held by church adults versus unchurched adults and that's not really a surprise you know people that are in the church are going to think more highly of the church, we would expect that, right? But I do want to make sure that we don't miss sight of these unchurched numbers, these dark red triangles here. Um, we see that 54% of unchurched adults in Kansas City say that Christian pastors in my community have been strong leaders during the pandemic. 53% say Christian pastors in my community have been strong leaders when it comes to racial justice. Um, that That is the majority there, barely so, right? 54% and 53%, but that is the majority. Um, maybe this is a spotlight, a scale, or a shovel for you as you think about the unchurched community in Kansas City. Um, as they have watched you lead during the pandemic, the majority of them say that they think that you have been a strong leader. Um, over the course of the past year. I think that's great news and really something worth celebrating. Moving on, we also look at uh, a variety of different things related to what people expect of churches. So those first four findings really relate to people's perceptions of the church and of pastors. And now we'll turn to what they're thinking about what they would like to see churches do in their communities. These next two slides really display that. We gave respondents a whole range of different things they might want. 
Uh, you can also see things that, uh, you know, so you've got homeless services, companionship for the elderly, counseling services, support for single parents at the top of the list. Um, I actually think just a quick call out on counseling services, that the fact that that's third out of a list of about 15 things, I'm gonna show you another slide in just a minute. But notice that counseling services uh, are, are third on this list. And especially with the tsunami of grief and mental health challenges coming out of coronavirus, uh, I think it shows a real way that churches can show up and support, uh, you, you know, people in the community in Kansas City. On the next slide, you'll see things uh, that relate to other issues that that uh, people would like to see. Again, the data slides that we, we that you can download as part of the toolkit, uh, grabbing you know grabbing your copy of this poster, um, you can use these to really drill down. There's other data that's going to be available. Uh, in the weeks to come as well, but you'll notice other things that people are interested in include refugee or immigrant services, prison or justice uh, reform, uh, debt relief or financial advice, access to healthcare services. You can see those last three are all areas where millennials in Kansas City are actually even more likely uh, than other adults to, to, to want those kinds of services provided by churches and Christian nonprofits. Um, so great opportunities, I think, for us to serve the needs of our community um, as we understand what people are looking for. Great. Now pivoting, pivoting a little bit to talk about something um, a little, a little different as we, as we look at this data through the lens of what people are expecting from churches. Um, we wanted to look at these things that uh, we call the five dimensions of human flourishing. Now, over the course of these forums, if you stick with us in the weeks and months to come, you're going to hear us saying that phrase a lot, human flourishing. And the five dimensions of human flourishing are spiritual, financial, mental and emotional well-being, vocation or career, um, and then relationships as well, right? Those are the five dimensions. And as we consider leading our churches um, into the future, we really want to challenge you all to think more holistically about discipleship. And hopefully this data shows you why we would encourage you to approach discipleship more holistically. Um, so if we look on the left side of our screen, we see church versus unchurched people in Kansas City. And if they are interested in hearing from a church on these types of topics through their preaching and programs, and um, especially if we look at that unchurched percentage for spiritual development and interestingly enough, mental and emotional well-being, that's the majority there with 54% and 53% of unchurched adults saying, huh, I'd be interested by that. Furthermore, 47% of those unchurched adults say they'd be interested in hearing about relational well-being. Um, there's, there's really an openness here, right? An openness to, um, to interact with the church or to look to the church for these types of like whole life things, right? Now on the right side, you'll see we cut the data by generation. And especially as we think strategically about reaching the next generation and serving them well, let's consider um, talking about things like financial well-being and mental and emotional well-being, like David said, that's definitely going to be a huge thing we have to consider as we move forward into the future. So um, hopefully we can we can begin this conversation today and continue it as we move forward. Um, what, what does it look like to have human flourishing as a part of our church programs and preaching? Yeah, and if you could just leave, leave that slide up for just one second. Um, just notice the fact that you've actually got the, the one area where everyone would expect churches to help is spiritual growth and development, mm -hmm. which is where all generations say, yeah, we'd be open and interested to that. But all the other areas, uh, you get a question, you can see how interested would you be if Christian churches in your community offered preaching and programs to help you achieve the following? And younger generations are more interested in those other areas. So it's kind of, you know, so, such a fascinating finding for me because if Christianity doesn't matter in all of life, it's not going to matter in any of life for emerging generations, actually for any age. Uh, but mm. such, such an important way I think we can minister, especially now to younger generations who are looking for the church to, to provide answers across a fuller range, a more holistic range of issues they're facing. Cool, cool news, I think, for us as leaders. Um, the next topic is this idea of sermon topic expectations. Uh, a point of clarification is uh, I've always thought about this as a researcher, even if we can figure out what people say they want, it doesn't necessarily tell us what they need, uh, but it does help us at least understand what's in their heads and their expectations. And so you can look at some of the differences here across Kansas City um, and by generation. So how to be a Christian in today's society, much more interesting uh, and, and helpful on the surface to boomers 
than it was to Gen Xers and millennials, uh, how to read and interpret the Bible, morality and values, the gospel. Uh, notice that who Jesus is is way down the list um, on, on you know, how people sort of rank these different topics. Um, and they could pick from a variety of them. So there was no like you know, forced choice in that. Um, <clears throat> but among younger people, relationships, uh, spiritual warfare, uh, justice and political issues uh, were, were at the top of the list. Again, we're calling out younger people a lot in these slides and in the data realizing of course that it's important to minister to people across the full age range from from birth to death and you know uh, gen xers and, and gen z and millennials and boomers and elders uh, but we really want to help you focus in especially on some of the perceptions of younger christians and younger uh, residents of kansas city as well but hopefully this is a way for you to begin thinking about are there missing pieces in what we're communicating how we're preaching what we're thinking about today that's so great. And in closing, we're going to provide you with one more data point specifically on sermon length. I think this is super practical and hopefully it's helpful for you. Uh, so go ahead and maybe jot down this number on a sticky note um, or something like that. We found in our research that the ideal sermon length in Kansas City for an in-person sermon is 34 minutes and online is 29 minutes. That's pretty much in alignment with national norms, which is something really interesting to take note of as we are programming our own services. When we cut this data by generation, it's pretty surprising actually to see that younger generations, um, you can head on to the next slide, younger generations actually are more likely to prefer longer sermons than the older generations. And that's, that's pretty interesting. We find that to be pretty interesting. Um, because you may have thought that it would have been the opposite, right? That younger generations had less of an attention span, but we don't find that to be true in Kansas City. So again, something just to keep in mind as we are, um, as we're leading our people well, digitally and in person, right?